Today I take a look at the movie The House with the Dork in Its Walls. Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day, and today it is Throwback Thursday and I am taking a look at the 1974 made-for-TV horror film Bad Ronald. Uh, this is not a terribly new concept. It has been done before. It has been done since. Uh, and I think it's been done better. But I still thought that this was a fairly enjoyable movie. Uh, I kind of picked it at, not necessarily at random. There was actually a reason that I picked it. And the reason comes down to two words, Dabney Coleman. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I love Dabney Coleman and, uh, uh, just kind of browsing through what movies he's done. It's like, oh, he's done a horror film, and it's a vintage one, so may as well include that in the Throwback Thursday. And uh, 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 it's not the best movie in the world <laughs> by a long shot, but I'm still glad that I watched it. It really was uh, just a not at all bad movie that pulls off a decent production of an outlandishly implausible scenario. In this film, we have Ronald Wilby, a teenager that is picked on, and generally a social outcast, has a very strong tie with his mother, Elaine Wilby. Uh, and uh, in the course of his day-to-day -day activities, he is uh, picked on. Not, I'm not going to say it was like a breaking point, once too many times kind of deal, but even so, uh, things got physical and got out of hand physical, and somebody wound up dying, and he is now on the run goes home, and because he has a strong tie with his mother, he's not necessarily, you know, I mean, uh, uh, after a short period of time, not afraid to tell her exactly what happened, be honest with her, and being the good mother that she is, uh, she is deciding that, you know, he can't go to jail, and uh, he must flee, but he can't flee, so what do we do? Well, we have this big house, and we have this downstairs bathroom, uh, why don't we take the door out, wall it up, create a cubby entrance, and have him stay there uh, in the walls uh, until the smoke clears. And then they can both make their exit together and, I guess, go on the lamb together. Uh, so, great plan. Uh, and, uh, you know, they execute it uh, like this movie does fairly well. Uh, you know, everything seems pretty passable. There's a wall there instead of a door there. Nobody would know unless they look at the floor plans of the house that something was wrong. Uh, but things go a little bit mm, askew when, uh, Mrs. Wilby needs to go in for gallbladder surgery and never makes it off the table. Uh, she passes away and a uh, new family wants to move into the house with Ronald still in there. And, um, uh, by this time, he is half lost in a world of his own fantasy and half trying to survive in the walls uh, while creeping in on this family. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to say what movies that this reminds me of right off the bat because a lot of those, uh, this is the spoilery element of it, that this is what's going on, there's somebody in the walls. So I'm not going to start naming names, but... Uh, uh, regardless, I did think that this one was, I mean, it, it was pretty clear that it was a made for TV horror film. It was more of a thriller than a horror, uh, which actually kind of brings me to an, uh, of a point that I wanted to discuss, uh, pulling back from the movie review and more into the channel itself of, uh, you know, what separates a thriller from a horror. Um, I mean, that's a whole big discussion I'm not going to get into right now, but, uh, moreover, more specifically, what constitutes a horror movie that I will review here on this horror movie review channel. Uh, I mean, this one has maybe, uh, you know, this, this much blood in it. Uh, not a whole lot of scares to be found. This is more the kind of, uh, the, voyeuristic, uh, your, your, your privacy invaded and your safety, your, your place of safety within your four walls, uh, inherently upended, uh, kind of thrill ride terror, uh, or just general unease. And, uh, you know, does that make a horror film? Some would say no, some would say yes. And where do I draw the line? Uh, really, I think what it's come down to is I wanted to take the decision away from myself 
and uh, abdicate responsibility on this one. So basically what it comes down to is IMDb will have uh, genre tags on their movies, I think up to three of them. Uh, So like Tucker and Dale versus Evil would be comedy, horror, action, or adventure, or something along those lines. Uh, So in that, as long as horror is one of those on IMDb, then I will say that it is subject to a rotted review. And this one was. This did have horror in its meta tags. Uh, <clears throat> I think it was drama, horror, and some thriller. So uh, I do think it's worthy of inclusion here, even though it isn't terribly scary. Uh, it's just more a bit unsettling in concept more than anything else. But again, I do think that this was executed fairly well. I'm going to go ahead and throw up all the scores here, and uh, each individual category is worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. And the plot of this, uh, I mean, eh, I'd say about average. And the intent, it worked for me on an entertainment level. I did find this to be entertaining. I did find it to be a fun watch. I'm glad that I watched it. What I didn't find it to be was scary in the slightest, not even unnerving, not unsettling not anything along those lines. So on one sense, it succeeded very well. I thought it was a great watch. Uh, On the other end, it didn't achieve what I think it set out to do for me. Uh, I mean, if we're talking about uh, showing in 1974 on ABC networks with a family huddled around its television set, I think that the sensibility level of what they're expecting uh, would induce some terror (laughs) Uh, but me, a horror film lover, kicking it on, uh, you know, it's not going to achieve the same effect. Uh, the sensibility levels are askew there. Um, <clears throat> but even so, uh, intent of 17 on that one. And the acting, uh, I thought everybody did a fairly decent job. Uh, Scott Jacoby, as Ronald Wilby, did uh, a very good job. He, he really kind of held the movie together. Uh, there was nothing spectacular about the acting prowess of any performance in here. I'm sorry, including Dabney Coleman, uh, but uh, I think everybody did a good job. Uh, they they sold the movie, they made it entertaining, and hats off to them for that one. Uh, and uh, you know, again, I you know, going back to Scott Jacoby, he really did make the movie uh, passable throughout. He, uh, if his performance was not sold, then the entire thing would have fallen apart. I mean, he's the titular character. Um, this implausible scenario had to have been sold by, uh, the technical uh, achievements of the film and the acting achievements of Scott Jacoby. And I think both did work. Um, and the technical, uh, yeah, I thought it was good. I mean, it was good, uh, you know, directing, editing, uh, you know, camera work, all that, nothing really spectacular, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing, uh, but nothing bad. Um, uh, and I was kind of trying to think of what to say about this one, uh, just generally. And then I started making the scores and a lot of times those kind of just come to, they come down to gut feelings, you know, one out of 25. I, I tend to kind of have this, uh, level system on my head that (laughs) shifts every once in a while, but you know, uh, you know, one through 10 would be kind of on the, you know, bad scale, uh, you know, uh, you know, 11 through 20 would be on the good scale, you know, somewhere in between those two would be on the average. Uh, and then beyond 20 is, uh, just, you know, where it starts to achieve, uh, exceptional levels of quality. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of made the scores on this one gut feeling and I totaled it up 61 out of hundred. And I thought, you know what, that's actually, exactly how I feel about this movie. I thought this was an slightly better than average, good, entertaining watch. Uh, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's nothing that I'm going to trip over myself saying, you have to watch this now. This is a must see for any horror film lover. I'm not going to say that it's not true. Uh, but if you are looking for something that is accessible, uh, to all ages is entertaining and would, generally, you know, it, it would fill a nice evening of popcorn movie watching fun. And, uh, you know, on that basis, yes, I would recommend Bad Ronald. If you're wanting the thrill of a lifetime, 
this might be one to pass on though. So that should about do it. That's my review of Bad Ronald 1974. Thank you very, very much for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If you like these videos, please click like and subscribe. And if you want to support me further, my Patreon link is below. Remember next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.